a former fighter is snatched to hell, Costa Rica, the year 2011. I am an evangelist and I preach what I live. Before I preached what I did not live. I was a rebel Christian and did martial arts at the gym. If anyone wanted to rob me I was ready to use my personal defenses. I started to train in martial arts to defend myself from the danger that was in my neighborhood. Over the years, I started training because I felt pleasure in fighting. I also evangelized when I was not in the gym. My pastor called me to go on a mission at Ecuador. And when we arrived in that country we visited the church. The pastor of that church said that a prophetess of God would bring the word and speak of her testimony. I and my pastor went to church to visit. The pastor of this church brought Angelica Zambrano to bring the message. She was being much talked about because of her testimony. She was already known and all the churches called her to minister. I did not know her only after the other raptures she had. That night she spoke of her testimony and one souls. I did not believe in her testimony and found the time wasted. I thought it impossible for a person to be raptured. The spirit leaves the body and return. For me, if the spirit left the body, it would not come back. When the service is over, I come out muttering and saying that she is a liar. My pastor who believed in her testimony rebuked me. I did not much believe in supernatural things because I was not a spiritual man. We stayed for a few weeks at Ecuador and returned to Costa Rica. My evangelism in the neighborhoods did not bear fruit. I planted and watered their word, but it did not work. My words had no anointing. I walked in evangelizing places and won no souls. I preached the word with all theological knowledge and my words were thrown into the wind. As much as I tried to persuade people, I did not succeed. My theological strategies did not work. I did not pray because my time was to train in martial arts every day. When you spend your whole day with other things, you will never have time to pray to God. Martial arts was more important to me than being in the presence of Jesus. I was more worried about my body being in shape, but I never cared about holiness. I kept wondering if my actions were pleasing to God. Because I got too close to the martial art, I ended up being distant from Jesus. I felt a great emptiness in my heart despite being a Christian. I was in church every day, but it was the same as not being there. I did not feel the presence of the Holy Spirit. I was disgusted and felt like nothingness, a person insignificant to God. And I made a purpose to pray every night and began to change the habit of my spiritual life. I was getting my body to get used to prayers. And that's what happened. My wife was asleep. I got up from the bed and bent my knees. I made a two-hour prayer for an answer. I wanted to know what had gone wrong with my ministry. Why did the presence of God move away from me? After the prayer, I lay down and stayed awake. White light filled my room. That light pulled me close to him. I was not in my body when I approached the light. In front of me, a black portal opened. I entered the portal and when I realized I was already in hell. And feeling lost I started to walk. I remembered the testimony of Angelica Zambrano. And walking aimlessly and without direction, I saw my aunt who suffered in deep agony. She died with resentment of her husband. Her heart was filled with hatred over separation from divorce. She did not want her husband to leave her for another woman. The demons dismembered her body. My cousin Hugo who died in an accident is in hell. He despite being a Christian lived in strife with his father and did not honor him. He was always seeing defects in his father's personality. And everything bad that happened to him he blamed his mother. He did not assume his faults and responsibility and sought someone from the family to blame. For him, all of his family were wrong and thought he was right in everything. He never repented of his sins. He did not assume that he was in sin and needed to be sanctified. The demons were grinding his whole body in hell. I saw my pastor's wife in hell. She died of cancer and the whole church believes she is in heaven. She went to hell for walking in lust. Her body is in a pit of fire consuming her flesh, leaving only the charred skeleton. When she saw me she asked for my help. In hell, there are more Christians than we imagine. 
I went to the section of a pastor who coveted his neighbor's wife. He died with this desire and lost his salvation. I went to the section where I saw a missionary who had an impure heart. He felt sexual desires for his mission friend's wife. In that same section, I saw an evangelist who had immoral thoughts and fantasized about having sex with prostitutes. He did not prostitute himself, but he died with a desire. A demon opened his skull and ripped out his brain. The demon said, your brain is unclean because of these unclean thoughts. The demon threw his brain into the fire, and yet the Christian felt pain without his head mass. I saw an elder from my church who died ten years ago. He was lustful of the Christian women of the church despite his being married. A demon ripped out his heart and threw it into a large frying pan. The demon said, his heart is lustful and he committed adultery in thought by betraying his wife. I went to the section and saw the Christian slanderers. They invented lies to destroy ministries within their churches. They wanted to keep the offices of the churches and invented lies to harm the workers. I saw Christians who had no mercy on their neighbor. They had financial conditions and refused to help their neighbors. They were greedy and foolish. I saw Christians who had envy and jealousy. They were jealous of their pastor's closeness to other members. A sister was in hell for being jealous of her friend in church. She even made intrigues of all the people who approached her friend. She wanted the friendship just for her. And because of these things she is in hell because of jealousy. I went to the section and saw a group of Christians who are in hell for being disappointed with God. They failed to succeed in their professions and rebelled against God. They were frustrated not to succeed in their material lives and blamed God for failing to honor their faith. They died in these sins and are in hell. I went to the section where the vain Christians are. They had many cars, land, and apartments. They spent the money to make their lives luxurious and extravagant. Vanity is something that wants to appear and get the attention of the world, saying, look at me, don't you see me? I am different. They are in hell for living in ostentation. I went to the section of Christians addicted to pornographic films. To my surprise, I saw Deacon Edgar, an old friend of my father's. I thought he was of salvation. He is there for not being able to get rid of the pornographic films. He had his wife but he could not fulfill his desire with her. He only felt pleasure when he watched a movie. The wife had no use in the sexual act and suffered a betrayal. Her husband betrayed her by thinking of pornographic actresses. I saw another Christian who is in hell for watching pornographic movies and made his wife a prostitute, imitating all the scenes that happened in the movies. I saw a name written on the plaque saying, Place of the Immoral. I went to the section of the impure. There are men and women who have sex with animals. Men who had sex with the corpses. They suffered the worst tortures and mutilations in hell. The Lord Jesus did not allow me to go to other sections in hell. I only went to the sections of Christians that were lost. After the last place I visited, a bright light came up to me and shone there. The light took me out of hell and took me into the air where I found a tool strong angel with the sword in his hand. The angel looked at me and said, Speak to the church that is going through difficulty what was revealed to you. Many have murmured instead of praying and strengthening their covenant. The angel said, It is time to return to earth. A chariot of fire and a horse came down to us. We got into the carriage. The angel let me drive that carriage and sat next to me. I did not know which way to go and was lost going left right and back. The angel looked at me and said, you do not know what direction you are going. So is your spiritual life. Release the reins, you do not have to drive the carriage, it knows where it goes. I released the reins and the carriage took the opposite direction to where I was going. The angel said, until now you have conducted your ministry by the strength of your arm. You have an old Jesus of this work. Look at this carriage and see that you do not have to drive it. It is time to let the Holy Spirit take the direction of your life and direct your ministry. The angel said, You have walked in unseen places and planted in infertile lands. Make a fix today in your life, stop practicing martial arts from hell. Jesus is your defense, you do not need the fight to protect yourself. 
the martial arts served to hit the image of God who is your neighbor. Jesus was against Peter's violence when he cut the soldier's ear. And he was taken to the sacrifice of the cross being stoned, whipped and slapped. And yet he did not raise his hands against his tormentors. Remember what it says in Luke chapter 6 verse 29, To him who strikes your cheek, offer him the other. The apostles also did not use physical force and were brought to the slaughter like sheep. Their weapons were the holy word that came out of their mouths. Tell the missionary Murillo that he has a gun hidden in his house, nobody knows, but Jesus knows. He does not need it, the Holy Spirit is his defense. The Lord Jesus does not want his servants either in the police or in the army. Because their lives are in danger and if they kill for self-defense they already practice the murder even knowing what the word condemns. There are professions that it is not for the servants of God. Professions that lie, deceive, and make sin do not come from God. The chariot went down to my house and the angel commanded my spirit to return to the body. And I went to evangelize in the city of Havana, Cuba. I did not know the danger I was running into. The regime of that country is not as liberal as that of other countries in Latin America. I was preaching in the square and was surprised by a group of men. They were not police officers, but they work for the government. They took me to a secluded townhouse. I stayed in a room chained in the chair and with a gag in my mouth. They picked up electrical wires and turned on the power and shocked me. I took an electric shock to the point of falling to the ground. The torturers put a towel on my face and closed my nostrils. And with a water hose made me swallow that water until I choked. I was in a small cell of short stature. When I entered the room I crouched for the little space. They turned on the refrigeration system, I felt very cold. Then they turned on the heater and I felt warm and with a loudspeaker with annoying sounds. They left me without food and drink. I suffered psychological torture. They applied the serum that made me sleep. The Holy Spirit gave me the strength to endure pain, hunger, and thirst. This group performed satanic rituals in front of me with my own blood. One of the members said, Here is a communist country, you cannot speak of your God. Let's destroy Christianity. We are the agents of the beast of the apocalypse. It was our communist empire that influenced Adolf Hitler to hate the Jews and kill millions of them. When communism completely dominates the world, we will shut down all Christian temples. We are the scarlet woman of the apocalypse, we have killed more Christians in history than the Catholic Church. Islamic terrorist groups are together with us. It is communism that sponsors terrorist groups and also the criminal factions of drug trafficking around the world. We hate Christians and Jews, who created the political ideology that supports abortion, homosexuality, rebel movements like hippies, punks, reggae, rockers, and others. We are the ones who did that. We will change the federal laws of all countries to destroy the gospel. In a few decades, families will be destroyed by sexual immorality. We will build a culture fallen and out of the Christian standard. We will destroy the humanity that believes in God and new people will be born with an ideology of the Antichrist. We are taking the authority of parents from their children. Our project is to make iniquity evolve and multiply throughout the world and thus become the Babylon of the Apocalypse. We are investing a lot of money in novels movies and cartoons to destroy the family and all kinds of inventions and technology to achieve global contamination. We are a unique political party and Satanist. Our network of political parties already dominates the world. Whatever we do, we consult Lucifer. He passes on the coordinations of hell to build a world that has its image and likeness. We will change the laws to benefit Satan. We will create gay marriages and establish a new world order. The world is already being indoctrinated by our master Lucifer. The Vatican is in our hands and the Pope already follows the doctrine of our master. The Islamic factions work for us. Communism is God and is creating a new era. Soon a man will reign and take over the world government and will be at the tropa politics. All political parties work for a network of communism. Parties are only enemies in the media to deceive the world. All parties work for us and obey our orders. 
they are ourselves that are paving the way for the Antichrist to reign. We already have the mark of the beast. Communism is an organism where millions of politicians and Satanists are at work. The media work to spread our lies. We deceive the people with false promises that will not be fulfilled. All this to save time until the Antichrist takes over and nothing will improve in this world. Politics is manipulating you. The world is confused and does not know which political party is right. It's no use running away from anyone who votes for us and will never get out of power. Communism finances evil on earth and implements war, famine, death and diseases created in the laboratory. These men who tortured me work for communism. They are just employees who perform the service of the great Satanists. They spoke all the secrets of the government, thinking that I would die in that prison. At dusk, they left me in the torture room all cut. I no longer had any hope of living. They were killing me little by little. Those Satanists looked like the devils of hell who tortured souls. I saw how the demons possessed them to torture me. The idea of manufacturing contraceptive to kill babies and destroy the family came from the adherents of communism. I was caught up in hell, but God did not let me be tortured. Now I was being tortured by the demon's followers. In that cold, damp room a demon appeared to me and said, How do you feel being in a piece of hell? And he laughed. That room looked like part of hell on earth. But the angel of the Lord appeared to me the same night, the same angel I saw in my rapture. He helped me what to do on earth. The angel's anointing made the chains and padlock fall to the floor and unlocked the prison door. I could not escape because I was weak from the loss of blood and lack of food. I fell to the ground and I was out of power to get up. The place was far from the city, I had no strength to walk there and no money to go by bus. They saved my life because I would be used as a laboratory genetic experiment. I was the experiment mouse for evil projects. The angel lifted me from the ground and took me in my arms. I fainted and woke up at home lying in my bed. I believe I was translated quickly or the angel with his speed of lightning brought me from Cuba to my country. I could not even get there by plane. The angel told me not to plant seeds in infertile lands. That place refused the gospel, I could not win souls. The angel asked me to walk in the direction of God. After that suffering, I decided to obey and go to the places that Jesus ordered. My wife took me to the hospital and I was hospitalized because of blade infections. Communism is 100% anti-Christs and hates God. It is an empire that acts like a beast that destroys and devours men. The radical Muslims who work for this empire are the crushing teeth of the communist beast. The red color of communism resembles the Roman Empire. Communism may be the new Roman Empire that will rise to persecute the church and the Jews. The ideology of unifying the world is to expect the world ruler to be part of their projects. I saw their plans and now I am sure that communism will bring all the policies together into one. May the peace of the Lord Jesus enlighten us all our men.